Did you see any of this as possible? And what did you make of the run? I have the utmost respect for AJ Hensha. I think he's one of the best managers in baseball. I fought that when the Tigers were terrible his first couple of years, when, when they were under 500, when they were scuffling. I, I still thought he was one of the best managers in baseball. You know, I'll be quite frank with you. I know Riley Green. I know Tarek Skubal. I know Javi Baez. I probably couldn't name five more Tigers. Um, I probably should get to know them pretty, pretty quickly here, but I think that in and of itself just tells you the job that AJ's done to get this collection of talent that is pretty unheralded, is pretty under the radar to get them to believe in themselves and to get them to galvanize and go on this run after they sold at the deadline. Like, let's not like, I think that's the most, that, that is the most fascinating thing about all this is that AJ Hinch was able to look at that clubhouse and look at that room after they traded Jack Flaherty, traded Mark Canna, traded Andrew Chafin, and look at that room and say, you know what, guys, like we're still playing for something. That That's a tough thing to do to convince a clubhouse that just sold off three pretty respected veteran pieces that we're still in this and we still want to do something. That, that to me, speaks volumes about what AJ's done, you know, you guys know, he's, he's got a psychology degree from Stanford. This guy can really get into players' minds maybe more than any anybody in baseball I've ever met. And I'm not going to claim that I watch the Tigers day in and day out, but, but just watching and, and hearing and looking at, at what he's been able to do with this collection of talent, with a, with a team that, I mean, I think you guys that watch him every day would probably agree, a, a team that's pretty limited. This, this is not some dynamic team that's got a bunch of superstars on it. They've got a couple guys that can turn into superstars, but this is not a, a loaded club by any stretch of the imagination to extract every ounce of value out of this team, to do what he's done with the bullpen, with the openers, to to manage his way to this point. It, it's it's an unbelievable accomplishment. And to be honest with you, if Stephen Vogt didn't win the Central in his first year as a manager, and if Matt Cotrero didn't take the Royals from 106 losses to the playoffs, he did probably the manager of the year. He'd probably get my vote, honestly, if I had a vote. He'd still get it from me. He's he's really good at this. And I knew when the Tigers hired him that, you know, it, it may not show up right away, but but this he's he's so, so good at keeping a clubhouse together and blocking out a lot of stuff that's gone on out, outside of the clubhouse. And players like him. Players love playing for him. And I think that's something that, gets overlooked nowadays. We, we look at a manager and we only look at bullpen decisions and lineup construction and when he pulls a starter and, you know, we don't, th that's nothing. Like the, the job of a modern manager is to keep a clubhouse intact, is to keep 26 different personalities in harmony and in, in together and cohesive and pulling on the same rope. And it's pretty obvious that he's done that and, and then some this year. With AJ obviously coming back to Houston for this series, being back in the postseason, for the first time since 2019. What, what do you think this means to him? I mean, he's talked about it a little bit, but what do you think going back to Houston for a three-game wild card series, kind of where things all began for him? Yes, I know, you know, he was in Arizona there with the Diamondbacks, but his career as a manager really took off in Houston and he did some amazing things there. And then there was the big fallout, the suspension. But for him coming back, like what do you think about about that and how much is that going to mean to him? He'll never say it publicly, but it, it means a good bit. Like I, I think he, I think he's really looking forward to this because I think he, in his heart of hearts, again, he he will never say this publicly. He may acknowledge it if the Tigers win this wild card series, but but I think there is some some level of I don't know if atonement's the right word. I don't know if redemption's the right word, but it's human nature, right? Like you're coming back to the place that fired you. Human nature is you want to show them kind of what you are and what you're made of like that that that's nothing to do with aj Hinch. that that in any situation if this was me or you or i think anyone we'd have that same natural human inkling to kind of to stick it to the man if you were to stick it to him stick like stick it to the team that fired you and look he's never told me that he's never hinted at that at all i i still think he's got pretty good relationships with a lot of people in houston both on and both in the astros organization and away from the astros organization you know, both of his daughters went to, went to high school in Houston. So, I mean, they've got like connections and roots there. So it's not just an Astros thing, but, you know, I think there is a little bit of him that would like to come in here and in their season in advance and kind of, kind of stick his chest out a little bit and be able to beat his chest out a little bit and say, look, th this is what I did. You know, I can do it and I can move past everything that happened here 
and still be successful.